Hello, hello YouTube, it is your boy GZTV back with another video, and in this video we are going to be discussing yet another Drake album in anticipation for a possible new Drake album coming sometime in August, and you know, we did Travis Scott month last month, we could possibly do Drake month this month, I'm not sure how far ahead we have until this album, but to hype it up a little bit and to kind of bring the Drake fans to the channel and we can talk about some things, you know, I decided to review some of his best albums i think take care is definitely his best album but not far behind i would say is nothing was the same i don't think this album is amazing it's definitely not as good as take care I, it might be a little far behind but this album has so much artistic vision i love what he envisioned for this project i mean it's great um it's not perfect i still gravitate towards a lot of songs on here some of my favorite drake songs are on this album and the cover is fucking awesome it's iconic it's been mimicked and parodied for years um you know it's kind of him looking at his younger self if you put it in full picture um and yeah i don't really have much to say for the in terms of like the intro and stuff i think it's safe to say we can get into the album so yeah let's get it starting with track one which is tuscan leather I believe this track was like leaked going into the album. Um, very crazy way to open up an album. Six minutes, six seconds, you know, obviously representing like his six god persona. Um, you know, named after the Tom Ford Cologne, Tuscan Leather. The beat takes a very interesting direction, as, as does a lot of the production on this album. And 40 was a big part of the production on this record, and he did great. So it's, it's crazy i mean straight bars no hook you gotta love that energy from drake obviously drake is more of like a pop star in the rap industry than others so he you know he he can lean on a hook from time to time but him just rapping on the opener was awesome um and it it's been a decade since 2013 and that man is still here and he kind of referenced that on the song so i thought that was a cool moment but let's move on Track two is Furthest Thing. This is one of my favorite Drake songs ever. This song is amazing. There's like two or three tracks on this album that are pretty much perfect in my opinion. You know, Drake's trying to find middle ground with his music and his lifestyle. You know, like his music style being rap and singing. This is the first album he really tried to do both on. I mean, or not do both, but like he bounced it really well on this album compared to some of his other records. Obviously his lifestyle, he wants to be chill, but at the same time he wants to party. You know, the song's kind of about being unfaithful and everyone making mistakes, and he's willing to admit it. Jesus Christ, can I get some fucking peace down here? I mean, the flows and the melodies, this track is such a vibe for this thing. You gotta love the beat switch. I think it, it wasn't necessarily needed, but I think it added a lot, so let's move on. Next track is track three, and the track that a lot of people recognize from this album started from the bottom. Obviously, it's a slightly overplayed song. It's one of his most popular songs. It's not that I don't like it because it's of its popularity. It's just super repetitive. I'm not a huge fan of this song, I'm going to be honest. It's obviously the hit of the record. It had an iconic music video, and it's like his come up song, um, kind of like Biggie's Juicy. That's kind of what I see in this song. Um, he was an underdog at one point, which is crazy to say. You know, as big as Drake has been in the music industry, he was an underdog. People were doubting him. And that's crazy how he kind of, like, details that on this song. Track 5 is Wu-Tang Forever. Very underrated song on here. Um, I've definitely caught on to this one recently. I didn't really bump this as much when I first heard this album. Obviously, Wu-Tang inspired with the title. You know, talking about women, creative influence, the industry. You know, a lot of things on his mind. A lot of different concepts kind of interwoven into, into this track with some metaphors. I would, There's not really a whole lot to say about this song. It's just an overall good Drake song. As we get in the next song, Own It, um, I'm not a huge fan of this song. This is one of the more bland tracks on the record. Uh, Party Next Door is an uncredited vocalist. Um, and getting into features, I mean, I can really appreciate and respect the hell out of Drake for the lack of features on this album. I mean, you get Party Next Door and Sampha, who aren't even really that mainstream. The only mainstream features here are like possibly Gene Aiko, um, Jay-Z, I mean, Big Sean and 2 Chains are on the deluxe. But, man, he... I can really respect Drake. Um, you know, he kind of flips the meaning of the previous song. It's a really cool segue how he gets into the concept here. He now belongs to the girl rather than the other way around. And yeah, it's not a great song, but I like kind of the connection with Wu-Tang Forever and this song. Next song is Worst Behavior, which is definitely an interesting song on the record. Something that, it's a sound we don't really hear from Drake that often. You know, it's kind of about 
uh, about growing up without a father and all of a sudden being famous, some crazy transitions. I mean, I think overall this album is really about transitions that he's had in his life, which is represented through the album cover, you know, going from a young child to being this famous rapper with these chains, all these women, all that stuff. Um, DJ Dahi had some ridiculous production on this song. Um, this song is for people who kind of grew up without loving parents and it's not great. I, I wouldn't say this is a great song, but it's definitely got some catchy parts to it. Next is From Time with Gene Aiko. Um, kind of a conversation between him and an ex. I mean, obviously, him and exes are a very prevalent topic early on in his career and probably still are to this day. Uh, great Gene vocals, great 40 production. This is a really good lineup here for this song. Um, standout song, one of his personal favorites in his discog, he said before. The beat is extremely iconic. I mean, Gene Gene Aiko just has such a sexy voice that adds a lot to the record. So, shout out to Gene Aiko, shout out to Shabib, shout out to Drake. This is a good song right here. Then obviously we get Hold On, We're Going Home. I think his name is Michael Mahid or something like that. Mahid Jordan. I don't remember what the guy, the artist's name is on the song, but. One of his first major dance hall tracks, obviously he touched on that a little bit in Take Care, but this is the first album where he tries to take that direction. Um, pretty solid song, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's poppy, it's a radio song, but I can appreciate it. I mean, they were trying to channel a different sound, for sure. Very dreamy, very slow tempo. Comes together really well. You know, the background, like, humming, vocals, really makes the song. I really like that part of the song. One of my favorite aspects of this album, really. Next is Connect, and this is kind of a track, like a three-track one we're about to talk about, where I wasn't really that invested. These are tracks I don't really go back to that much, and and people and Drake stands will disagree. I mean, Connect's like talking about toxic relationships, swinging like playing baseball, swinging like they do in Houston. You know, he sampled a song by the name of Swing as well by I can't remember the guy's name, but it was the same sample that actually Travis Scott used in Can't Stay. So that's an interesting little connection um it's a it's a chill song it's okay uh, i like the verses but the hook isn't quite that good and i mean out of drake you expect amazing hooks but this one just doesn't quite hit doesn't quite hit no pun intended as we get into the next song called the language it's obviously it's like a braggadocious track on the album it's pretty simple you know talking about how he's always stunting like lil wayne uh, sounds like a track Travis would sound good on. I think Travis Scott would have been great on this, even though he wasn't really that popular, and Drake couldn't possibly have really gotten him on this album. I think this is like a, a very Travis Scott-esque song. So, yeah. Next is 305 To My City. I, I think he has Detail on it, who is like a YMCMB uh, producer or DJ, one of the two. Um, it's about a stripper who hustles like Jay-Z. Um... Man, another feminist song, another song about strippers. You, you guys get that a lot in Drake's discography. It's got that, like, Make Me Proud vibe. You know, the song with Nicki Minaj off of Take Care. Um, detail sounds like Thug on this. I'm not even going to lie. But um, I don't really have much to say about that song. It's it's okay. Then we get into uh, Too Much. Kind of like an In Your Feels song. Kind of like the Marvin's Room of the album. Sampha did amazing here. I mean, the vocals, the chorus is just a, ex like an extremely iconic moment on the album. One of his most introspective personal songs and is a discography still to this day. You know, talking about family issues, talking about anxiety, all those type of things. Too Much is great. I'm not going to go super in-depth. It's just a very enjoyable song. And yeah, his, his lyrics, like always, go pretty underappreciated. So let's get into the outro track. Man, Drake left this album with a bang on a song like Pound Cake, Paris Horton Music 2. Obviously a two-part track. Two part song, or two tracks in one. It has Jay-Z on the first half. Um, one of his best tracks ever. This is one of the best songs in Drake's entire discography. This is widely regarded as like a magnum opus of his. Um, you know, the beats, his vocals, absolutely incredible. You know, Drake and Jay-Z is a really cool collaboration. Um, obviously, sometimes it doesn't get executed very well, but on paper, it's just fantastic that these two would work together. Um, this is the outro to the original album, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna get too crazy into the bonus tracks, just because I don't really feel that well, and plus, 
you know, I, th I th those other tracks don't really mesh. Uh, the Jimmy Smith intro was sick. I mean, the first Paris Horton music song was insane as well. I don't know if the second version of it is that good, but yeah, let's get into the review. So getting into my reviews and the final thoughts on this album, um, just such a versatile project overall. Like he really shows his range here. I mean, he goes from singing, he goes from rapping, and the in the same songs. I mean, it's pretty impressive. I don't know why my parents keep fucking texting me. I'm trying to finish this video, but yeah, I mean, you know, I know this album pretty well. I've listened to this album quite a bit. There's definitely songs I didn't listen to as much that are hidden gems. And again, with every Drake album, I feel like the more you listen to them, the more you'll pick up on things. And, I mean, I don't know if I did that necessarily this time around, but there are definitely some songs in here that I didn't appreciate as much before, such as like a Wu-Tang Forever. Um, I will say there are some boring stretches on this album. It's still a good album regardless. I still don't have anything really bad to say about it. Um... There's a lot of interesting chipmunk vocal cuts on this album. not and, and the first thing you would think when you hear that is Kanye West. But not quite like that. I think Drake kind of has his own unique sort of add-ons in the production. So it's really cool. Um, yeah, we can skip bonus tracks. They don't they don't flow. Um, the like Bonus tracks are some of Drake's best songs, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Like Come Through is amazing on this album. I love that song. Hate Sleeping Alone was amazing on Take Care. Like, he, he dropped some great bonus tracks. But, again, it doesn't really go with the album's message. It doesn't transition well with other songs. So, we'll just leave it at that. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. I don't know if this video was that long. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want me to keep doing reviews like this. You know, if any artist is, like, teasing some big releases. I was going to do Trippy Red. But, like, besides Life's a Trip, there's not really any other albums of his that I desire to re-listen to. So, yeah, on that note, I might see you guys on stream tonight. I probably will. Uh, I'll probably muster up the, the, the strength. I'm kind of fucking, like, sick right now. I don't know what's happening. So, yeah.